Hi gang, Scott here. I want to share with you an interesting tool called Avalanche. Now what Avalanche is, it's a photo catalog migration tool. It will take your photo catalog from Apple Aperture or Luminar or Lightroom and transfer it to another tool. And it's quite interesting and I think it's of keen interest to Luminar users. You know, if you're a Skylum Luminar user and you had Luminar 4 and you've got a big catalog of photos, you know, Luminar AI came out and Skylum basically stepped back from managing assets. And I've got different videos that say why I don't think Luminar is the place to manage your photos anymore. Well, Avalanche gives you an option to move that Luminar catalog into something else, into Lightroom into Capture One is coming soon, uh, into just a set of flat folders. Or if you're really interested in moving from Luminar 4 to Luminar AI, you have that capability as well. This is a Mac OS only utility, so let me point that out straight away. There is no Windows version right now. But in this video, I wanna do a couple of things. Give you a quick tour of what Avalanche is and you know how it kind of operates in the different products that they have based on what I'm seeing on the website here. And then we'll go through an actual catalog migration. I've got this loaded on my laptop. Uh, Syme, the company that makes Avalanche, were kind enough to share a license key with me so we can go through and see how a uh, catalog migration works. So let's have a look here. So here's the landing page for Syme and you know, introduction, Avalanche. This is this photo transfer library thing. Let me go to the main Avalanche page here. And there's a nice graphic that shows you what's going on. So you can start in one of these utilities, you know, and migrate your photos, your edits, your metadata to other ones. And for Luminar users and Luminar AI users, I think it's quite interesting because you can migrate from those catalogs someplace else. For Luminar 4, you could move to Luminar AI if you wanted to, uh, or you could move to Lightroom or Capture One, something that's going to be long-term and more uh, stable, really, for your photo management you know, and keeping those assets going. Let me click on the main uh, the thing here, like the buy now, because the way that it seems that they have packaged things, right, is you have Avalanche for Lightroom, Avalanche for Luminar. Think of those as your destination. If you want to take something like Aperture or Luminar or Luminar AI and move into Lightroom, you'd want to get, you know, to Lightroom, convert, you know, to Lightroom. For Avalanche, you would convert from someplace to Luminar 4 or Luminar AI. So this, uh, like Avalanche for something, that's your destination. And of course, you have Avalanche Unlimited, which will really just basically mean you can go in and among and between everything that you want to. But uh, you know, when you're talking asset management, you're probably wanting to get to a single asset manager. And so, you know, the the good choices here, I would advocate Lightroom. When Capture One is done, that's a good choice. I'm not a fan of this one here, not because Avalanche is a a poor utility. Far from it. It's because, as we've been talking about. Luminar, I don't think is the place that you want to manage your assets long term. You could use Avalanche maybe to get you over the hump to Luminar AI, but at some point, I think you're going to want to get somewhere else or even just into folders. So with that, let's take a look at an example transfer. Let's see what does work, what doesn't work, what are some of the clues that Avalanche gives you through the migration here. Because uh, like any migration, it's never going to be pristine because different tools have different behaviors. But, uh, but Avalanche does quite a good job of maintaining the integrity of your catalog and uh, bringing over as many edits as it possibly can. So let's go ahead and dive in here. Here is a Luminar 4 catalog that I'm going to convert. Right? So we're in Luminar 4. And the only reason I'm showing you this is just to get an idea of what I have in this catalog. You know, it's not big, you know, 40, 50 photos. I've got a few albums. And I've got a couple of favorites that have been tagged. I can see some metadata in here. And I have a few that are edited. So we expect to see you know, these edits come through over into my target, wherever I decide to send this to from Avalanche. Some things I expect to work, some things I do not, and uh, that's okay. But uh, it's just really to kind of illustrate what is capable and what is possible. For example, I know I did a sky replacement on this photo here, and I did a sky augmentation on this photo here. If I send these to something like Lightroom, I don't expect that to work. If I send it to Luminar AI, I would expect that to work. 
But I'm going to go with a, a Lightroom conversion for this one because, as I've said earlier in this video, that I don't think managing your photos in Luminar long term is the right choice. So here is Avalanche Unlimited. You fire it up and you have the choice. You can scan your hard drive and it will find all the catalogs. Or I can just drag one that I have. I know I've got my Luminar 4. Drop that in here. And it does a quick analysis. What do you got? And you get some start and end dates, so forth. Found the three albums. It gives me an idea of how long it's going to take to convert. And that is not a typo, right? In one minute. This is, this is fast. Convert the catalog. We have a few choices here. I'm going to choose to export to Lightroom, and these choices will change a little bit depending on where you're targeting. I'll choose Lightroom as my ultimate target. Lightroom offers XMP sidecars. I'll just leave that off for now for the test here. Um, copy reference master files. Uh, that's worth talking about. That term reference master, that's an aperture term, but it basically means a catalog that points at a set of folders. Uh, Aperture, and I think Capture One has a similar feature. You can have all of the photos, your master originals, kind of hidden inside of your catalog. Well, Luminar doesn't work that way, right? Luminar or Luminar AI, you point it at a set of folders, and that's where the photos live. During the conversion or the transfer, you can choose to copy all of those original files. If you check that box, it will copy all of the files. If you leave that unchecked, it will just leave those photos you know, where they are. Uh, I'm going to do a copy of them because this is a test run and I'm making sure things are working well. I don't want to do this on a few small scale pieces of my, uh, my catalog. And then if I'm ready to do a full migration, you know, maybe I'm just going to make it clean. I got a new hard drive and just have everything moved over. But let's go ahead and continue with, uh, with this conversion here. So I'll keep that checked. Uh, separate image and video hierarchies does not matter because Luminar has no videos. Exported library structure. Um, I'll keep the reproduce source hierarchy. So the albums and so forth I have in Luminar should appear in the same way in Lightroom, of course, as collections. Uh, exported folder structure. This is for the photos. So this, this copy the reference masters. Uh, year, month, I have a few things. I'll choose year, month. I certainly don't want it flat. And I can choose which version of my catalog. Image previews, that's okay. I'll let Lightroom make those after the fact. Click Next. I choose a destination for my converted project, my catalogs here. So let's go into the Browse. I'll make a new folder and call it Loom 4 to LR. We'll have it go there. And I'll press Convert, and it's already done. Now it's got a few things it's telling me about. Okay, uh, data couldn't be converted, meaning thumbnails and previews. That's fine. Some bits on timing. Okay, this is interesting. Some extra structures been added: approximate conversions, complex stacks, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That suggests to me we'll see versions of things where it could do the conversion and it could not do the conversion for editing. And then when we open up the catalog, it'll take a little bit of time. Let's go ahead and open the catalog. So I can just hit open the catalog here. It'll fire up Lightroom. Okay, and here is the catalog. We can see it's STP4 Luminar converted. And so far it looks pretty good. Uh, let's hit the grid view. I see 47 photos, right? That's correct. And I see my catalogs here, or, sorry, my collections. So the architecture, these were all my albums that were in Luminar. Um, this one looks like an odd conversion. I'll have to go check on seeing what happened. I know I didn't have it that blue. But that's, a, that's an interesting one. So there may be something that uh, Avalanche needs to sort out. But this other area here with this Avalanche generated collections, here's approximate conversions. And so I guess these would be photos that couldn't be 100% mimicked with the settings, like this one here. Um, this is pretty close to what was in Luminar, but it's nice that these types of collections are created. So you can go and sanity check different photos. Did those non-destructive edits come over to your satisfaction? And if they didn't, well, you still have your Luminar catalog. You can just cut JPEGs or high-quality TIFFs 
for archival purposes, yet still bring in the images and maintain that metadata. And then we have what was imported, exact conversions. So this is interesting, exact conversions. And I've got at least one that I know I've done edits on. And once again, that looks exactly like I had it in Luminar. So that's fantastic. It's a really good job there. Um, now this one's uh, interesting because it did an exact conversion. However, it did not bring in the augmented sky. Not that I expected that would show up because that is something that Lightroom would just have no concept of, but it did get qualified as an exact conversion. All right, well, there's still you know work that needs to be done. Here's that one I talked about, that sky replacement. I wouldn't expect the sky to show up. This marked as an exact conversion right? Because that might have been the only thing I did to that photo. Who knows? I have to go check one by one to make sure the conversions and everything came in properly. So that is a tour of Avalanche. And at least for this first run through of taking a Luminar 4 catalog, moving into Lightroom, worked quite well. Metadata was maintained. The albums became the proper collections. And in many cases, the edits looked good. Now, there's certain things I expect that will not work, right? You have certain layering aspects going on in Luminar, especially Luminar 4, which had layers, right? You know, Lightroom doesn't have layers. So those types of photos I would not expect to translate over, but for basic edits, looked really good. Like any conversion or migration from one tool to another, the edits become challenging and it's you can get good results i think some good things here it's never going to be 100 you know we're harking back to when i migrated from aperture to lightroom part of that process for the photos that i really really need to keep those final edits they need to be pristine you're cutting like archival tiffs and you're migrating those tiffs into your new catalog. So I could see Avalanche working very well once you said I'm I'm in my source program. I'll say Luminar 4, I've cut my archival tiffs, they're sitting in my, my Luminar catalog. Now I fire up Avalanche, move over to my new asset manager. Those tiffs are gonna come along for the ride. They'll maintain the star ratings. If it's flagged as a, as a pick or a like, that comes along. If it's in an album, that comes along and you just, in your new asset manager and your new work can continue in whatever your new destination is. So again, if you're a Mac user and you're thinking about moving off of Luminar to another asset manager, check out Avalanche. Link in the show notes, use that link, it'll give me a little bit of help, but otherwise, you know, I'm not paid by uh, Siam to, to talk about this. They gave me a license key, which was very kind of them, and it is an interesting tool. And so I think it's worth having a look at. Hope you found the video useful. And uh, until next time, my name's Scott Davenport. Have fun.